stranded or unaccounted for, our families and young children, and some of those who have lost their lives overnight are young children, including a mother and two children in a vehicle. We have uh, specialist teams who are all on standby in the region. Uh, the CERT team, the Queensland Police CERT team, have been deployed overnight. We have specialist swift water rescue teams on standby. Uh, we also have uh, additional fire and rescue teams. We are finding it very difficult to get these teams out and deployed because of the weather and the uh, constantly changing uh, water system. They are, however, as I said, ready to deploy and into that region as soon as we see any of this weather lift. We are also seeing our flood levels rise in river systems right across the southwest. Not only Dolby and Chinchilla evacuating people overnight, we now expect to see Warwick reach a peak equal to or greater than the peak last week uh, by lunchtime today. Similarly, we will see those waters affecting Stanthorpe, Gundawindi, Texas, Yalaban, Inglewood and all of those uh, towns in those regions. The, Condamine, uh, the town of Condamine is also uh, flooding uh, with waters rapidly rising and we will be watching that, that town very, very closely. All vehicles that were damaged in uh, Toowoomba in the CBD yesterday have now been searched by police and I'm relieved to say that we have not found anyone in those vehicles who is deceased or uh, seriously anyone at all in those vehicles. Um, I can confirm that uh, we have had one helicopter be able to get into the air briefly this morning uh, who has confirmed that there, are, there appear to be no further people on rooftops in settled areas like Helladon and uh, in the Grantham area. However, we cannot rule out that there may be people stranded on the rooftops of outlying properties and as soon as we can get helicopters into the air, we intend to search those areas for those, uh, for those people. Into the Wyvernhoe system, we've now seen because of continued heavy rainfall overnight, further revised predictions about the Ipswich and Brisbane areas. Ipswich is now likely to see a flood river a le level in the river uh, hit about at least 16 metres. Uh, the hydrology reports indicate, however, that if uh, the rain continues and the Bureau is advising it is set to continue, then we are likely to see anywhere up to 18 metres in the Ipswich uh, River system. By comparison, the 1974 flood saw uh, close to 20 metres in Ipswich. What all of this means for the Wyvernhoe catchment is that we will now have to remodel and plan for larger releases out of the Wyvernhoe Dam to manage this inflow. That means that uh, the Brisbane area will now have to reconsider the implications of the water likely to come down uh, out of Wyvernhoe and revise up the weather that we are seeing swelling the Brisbane River and the in-stream flows will also increase. The Brisbane Local Disaster Management Group will meet for the first time this morning at 10am. They will consider the further the implications of this new modelling and advise residents accordingly. I say to all residents in the Brisbane, Ipswich and Lockyer Valleys, for those of you who can, please listen to radio reports. Uh, we will be updating people throughout the day. It is a constantly changing situation. I stress that the releases being made from Wyvernhoe Dam are not optional. There is no discretion here. This is how this dam operates. We need to make sure uh, that we protect people down this river system by operating the dam safely and appropriately. Ladies and gentlemen, as you will hear from further reports from the Deputy Commissioner of Police, this has been a night of extraordinary events. We've seen acts of extraordinary bravery and courage from our emergency workers. We know they are out there on the front line desperately trying to begin their search and rescue efforts and we know that we have people stranded and people lost. We are doing our best to protect our emergency workers during this severe weather. We are equally doing our best to get everything that we can into that region to uh, save and rescue people. There's no doubt that we are now in, I think, a very different uh, sort of disaster. And what it is doing is testing uh, our emergency response and it will test us as communities and as people. This weather, I think, is... Um, it might be breaking our hearts at the moment, but it will not break our will. What we have out there on the front line are some of the best trained people in Australia. And they are going to protect these communities and we are going to make sure that we keep everybody that we can as safe as humanly possible. I'd like to ask the Deputy Commissioner to make some comments. Thank you, Premier. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, certainly our focus at the moment is, as it always is in response, personal safety 
uh, we have a major search and rescue operation underway uh, right throughout the Lockyer Valley. As the Premier said, Toowoomba is fairly stable. We don't think that we will see any further deaths um, out of the Toowoomba CBD, but, but um, our search and rescue activities uh, in the Murphy's Creek and Grantham area in particular, um, uh, certainly is, it is expected that we will find uh, further persons deceased in those areas. Um, the numbers we just don't know at this stage. What I would ask, though, is one thing. Um, the rain and the, uh, the weather pattern at the moment is variable. It is hampering our search and rescue operations. Um, access to the area through roads is, is very difficult for us. Um, our helicopter assets are having difficulty because of the rain pattern uh, moving around that area. But the one, uh, the one contributing factor which is getting in our road is onlookers now. And I would stress to people that any diversion of our precious emergency services to deal with simple rubberneckers and onlookers could cost a life. I would ask people to be sensible and if they have no reason to be there, stay out and get out of those areas. Thank you. Just before calling Jim Davidson, I should have also said that we are continuing to make evacuations across the Lockyer Valley area. We have people being evacuated from Tagulawa and Esk. Uh, 200 evacuations likely to occur this morning at Forest Hill, although we expect they'll be evacuated into a, an evacuation centre in higher ground at Forest Hill. Uh, we uh, have also seen overnight evacuations in Nanango. Uh, we also have the, uh, the community of Sherberg now completely cut off and food supplies being taken in. Uh, there are multiple breaks in the road uh, between Ipswich and Toowoomba. People should not be driving on those roads uh, and we continue to need those roads uh, to be free from other vehicles than emergency vehicles. I'll ask uh, Jim Davison to give us a bit of an update on what the weather is doing and some background to the event that has led to this terrible tragedy. Thank you, Premier. Good morning, everyone. The super rainstorm we saw yesterday over Toowoomba and in the Lockyer Valley was an extreme event and you'd say it was towards the top of the severe weather and flash flooding scale. It was very unique. What were the circumstances that set up uh, this particular event? It, it, it all started uh, I guess a few days ago with that upper low which we were all tracking, the one that moved out to sea uh, off Capricornia then moved back onshore again. So that was the, the synoptic, the larger scale um, feature which uh, produced this exceptional storm. But, but there were other considerations, all on the local scale. Uh, the saturated catchments, of course, we've had flooding now for many weeks, many months. And Toowoomba itself actually had upwards, I think, of 100 millimetres uh, on the previous day. So the ground was very wet. Um, the escarpment, the range just um, on, on, the, on the doorstep of Toowoomba, that would have served to produce uplift for the rain and precipitation, so once again it was a local factor which contributed. The uh, relatively large area of, of this rainstorm, um, the, the, the rainstorm itself wasn't that exceptional in terms of appearance on radar and satellite, but it did cover a fairly large area. Um, the, the rainfall reports we did get from Toowoomba uh, said uh, they received about 80 millimetres in half an hour, or a little bit more than half an hour. We're, we're fairly confident that if, uh, if we had rainfall reports on a much uh, tighter scale, smaller scale, we would have seen 100 to 150 millimetres easy uh, in that general area. And, of course, the other consideration was uh, the funnelling in, into Lockyer Creek. Having Toowoomba situated where it is, Lockyer Creek immediately underneath the range, it all came together, as, as, as I said, on a very local scale. Now, when it comes to forecasting, uh, the computer models that we use um, aren't run at, at, at a high enough resolution to pick up these sort of um, very small-scale weather features. Every now and again, I hope it doesn't happen very often, it won't happen very often, I can reassure, reassure people that we will get one of these very extreme events which fall within our resolution of, of, of our computer models. But our forecasters are ever on the alert, monitoring the weather as it happens, and yesterday we were monitoring that particular rainstorm as it moved across southeast Queensland, but as I said earlier, uh, for all intents and purposes, we were satisfied at the time that the severe weather warning, which spoke about uh, potential flash flooding in the Toowoomba region, would cover that circumstance. As we know now, it didn't. 
Um, when, when we did become aware that um, the rainfall was uh, extreme in the Toowoomba area and that flooding was starting to occur, we, we immediately jumped into flash flood warnings and we turned on the standard emergency warning signal. And we made calls to numerous agencies, uh, rele uh, relevant agencies, authorities, responsible uh, for uh, policing uh, the Lockyer Valley and surrounds the police, for example, and, and Emergency Management Queensland, and alerted them to the fact that we, were, that we did have a, a serious situation on our hands. I might stop there, but I'm happy for any questions. Thank you. Jim, can I just get you, you say that this could not be forecast? Perhaps I shouldn't say it, it could not be forecast, but uh, I think it's important to say that it, it's very difficult to forecast. Uh, um, it's, I'm not saying we miss all events uh, of, of this nature, but every now and again one will be... Uh, the, the combination of factors on the local scale will, 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 will produce an extreme event of this nature. Um, and it's not always uh, we have the, uh, the science and the capacity to see this before it happens. But what were the exceptional circumstances here? You're saying that, you know, it was heavy rain, but you see heavy rain before. It was a bit larger than normal, but that's about all, really, isn't it? Well, no, not really, because I said before there were those other uh, factors operating. The saturation, everything was saturated. saturated. So, so this rain, when it fell, just it, it it wasn't absorbed into the ground. It, it stayed on top of the ground and eventually moved into Lockyer Creek. The escarpment, um, having that storm approach the escarpment, I guess he, even on that particular angle, meant meant the uplift was. Uh, was very strong, so the cloud and precipitation uplifted, and, and, and when cloud and precipitation lift like that, it drops huge amounts of rain. So, so, so it all came together in a very local area uh, within a short period of time. It could well be that the entire storm didn't really impact on the, on, on the Toowoomba area, but just uh, for half an hour or so, the, the, the actual rainstorm took much longer than half an hour to actually pass over Toowoomba, whereas the uh, the, the, the rain of it was more like uh, 30 minutes or so. And you were saying, sorry, I didn't quite follow you, you said it measured 80 millimetres in 30 minutes, but it was more likely to be 100 to 150. Yeah, the, um, because of the very uh, small scale of, of what occurred, um, uh, we do have a, a fairly good network of rainfall reporting in, in that area, but not dense enough to pick up everything that fell on the ground. So we suspect with what we saw, the 8 metre wall of water going down the Lockyer Creek, there must have been falls maybe even of 200 millimetres in places uh, perhaps on top of the range or just down from the range at Toowoomba. Now, that, uh, if I could just say, uh, a fall of 80 millimetres in half an hour or so, we're looking at about a 1 in 100 year event for that area. Now, we get 1 in 100 year events um, fairly frequently across Queensland for a particular town or city. So... Not great, but as I said, we're almost certain there were much higher falls close by. Premier, you said last night that you were fearful there could still be people spending the night on rooftops. You'd said that they, uh, well, the greater residential areas has got the all clear. Are we, are we sure that those people are safe in the residential areas? We can say that we don't have any visual uh, sightings from helicopter of people on rooftops in uh, Helladon or Grantham. Uh, we are unable to say that there may not be some people on rooftops in more isolated rural properties. Remember that uh, this is a rural part of Queensland. There are many people who do not live in town. Uh, similarly, we don't know necessarily where those people, if there were any people who have subsequently got back into the, the buildings they were sitting on top of as some of the water's gone down, and we won't know that until we can get either uh, water boats or a helicopter in there. And some of those pictures that we've seen have just been so heartbreaking. You said earlier that a lot of those missing are young families. Uh, we have some 72 people unaccounted for, uh, and obviously they span... Uh, from the very young right through to the very old, uh, but we do have some whole families who at this stage are unaccounted for. Uh, we, I think, uh, have already seen absolute tragedy uh, with the eight deaths that are known. Uh, it does include two children who are quite young, uh, but we know that at least one... Sorry, the first four were two children who were quite young, and the second four, a mother and two children, so half of the eight uh, so far are children. This took uh, everybody uh, so unawares that uh, there was no opportunity in most cases for people to get to safety. 
Uh, so we do anticipate that these numbers are very preliminary. Until we get uh, our emergency people into those areas, we really can't give you anything more certain other than to say, in all honesty, we hold very grave concerns for a number of these people who are not accounted for, and uh, we are anxiously, anxiously uh, worrying that uh, we will see this toll rise. At what point did the message go out to evacuate to those residents, and why did it take so long? Yeah. Um, are you talking in terms of the uh, emergency evacuation signal? Yeah. That was enacted as soon as we could, but there is a time lag from when that goes, uh, when the process starts to when it actually physically goes out. Certainly, uh, there was no evacuation in Toowoomba. There was no warning in Toowoomba because of the, the nature of the event. And as I've explained previously, when we're dealing with floods like we've seen throughout the state over the last couple of weeks, most of that we can predict we uh, have time to get in to deal with it. This was purely an emergency response situation with no warning at all, basically, to emergency services. We simply had to react the best way we could and all emergency services uh, swung into action as they would normally do in any such event. Does there be more warning, though, for Grantham and further, further down after Toowoomba? Um, certainly. Uh, the volume of water um, caught, I think, most people by surprise. And, and I am not yet sure, because we haven't been able to go back and tally this up, uh, what emergency uh, warnings went out to the, the lower, lower Lockyer area. Can you just describe the situation in Grantham at the moment? I know last night you were saying there were 30 or so people in the school hall. Is a lot of the news about this level coming out of that area? Um, no. Um, certainly Grantham is one of the focus, but the other one is that um, Murphy's Creek and Withcott area. That's the other area we're having difficulty uh, getting into, and that as most of that area is uh, not isolated, but, but rural property on acreages, that sort of thing. And it's going to take us a long time uh, today to get to every one of those uh, areas. I mean, the, the sheer scale of this uh, operation is quite daunting when you look at the number of places, uh, areas and creeks that have been affected. Can you give us any more information on the victims? We know that there were four children and two mothers. Can you tell us about the other people and where these people are? Um, certainly there was an elderly lady in a house at uh, Halidon who was found deceased as a result of the flood. Um, a gentleman and a, a, a middle-aged man and a, a younger male uh, in the Murphy's Creek area have been uh, confirmed deceased and as you said then there were the two mothers and their children. It, they were both in vehicles. Uh, one was in Toowoomba in the initial, um, the initial phase um, and the, um, the second vehicle was down at Grantham. Can I say these tragic deaths overnight are a very timely reminder to everybody that this fast moving water kills. I saw images on every news station last night in other parts of Queensland of people jumping off bridges into this sort of water and people attempting to drive through quite heavy uh, water over bridges and over, ro over roads. Uh, our emergency services are up to this task, but we do not need to challenge them further with people doing stupid things. I just send out the most heartfelt appeal. Please do not cross roads that is flooded and do not jump into these waters we need no more timely reminder than the shocking tragedies last night that this water is deadly and it's not to be played with. There have been reports of freezes and large objects floating down the river near Coron Coronation Drive as well. People around Brisbane should be careful of projectiles as well, things like that. Oh, certainly, um, and we know that in the last couple of weeks there have been times because of the debris coming down the Brisbane River, the Brisbane River even, that the uh, the City Cat service has to be suspended, and that's done by the Brisbane City Council. So anywhere where there are floodwaters, people do not know what's under that surface. It could be anything. Um, we, as the Premier said, we're we're pleading to people: do not become a statistic. There there is no need to go into this flood water. Um, as we've said all the way along, we can replace fridges, freezers, houses. We just cannot replace people. Jeff, the, oh sorry, Jeff, yeah. the, uh, the rain today that we're seeing, is that likely to produce another super rainstorm or anything like that? Um, the, the simple answer is no. I can, as I think I said uh, before, I can reassure people that it's very unlikely we'll see an event of this magnitude again, particularly uh, you know, in the short term like this season. Uh, however, there is a uh, a fairly decent rain band at the moment between the Sunshine Coast and the Granite Belt, and, and we are 
uh, monitoring that very closely. We're getting reports in that rain band of up to 80 millimetres an hour. Um, and we do have the standard emergency warning signal turned on. We do expect, though, that this particular rain band will be the last in the series. Once we see this uh, weaken in the next uh, few hours, we should then enter a period where we just generally see the rain easing over southeast Queensland, and tomorrow should be a much better day than today. Is that, is that right for Brisbane as well? Uh, that's correct. Was it could be worse for us tomorrow? Uh, sorry? I thought we were looking at possible worse conditions uh, not weather-wise, uh, just just a shower or two or a few showers for, for the rest of the week. And Jim, the incident in Murphy Creek, is that making you look at things differently and perhaps put out warnings more quickly, even if it isn't as much rain as what you initially think? Well, we issue warnings always as quickly as we can, and and as I think I explained, this, this one was different, this super rainstorm. It, it was something which any uh, forecaster in the world may, you know, may not have issued a warning for, so it, it, you know, it was exceptional. But at the same time, I should add that, like all events of this nature, we will be reviewing the situation in partnership with uh, our colleagues, our state government colleagues and the like, and uh, looking at ways that perhaps we might improve uh, the warning system in the future, but every now and again, very rarely, we might see something like this happen. It's unfortunate. Um, Hopefully in the future the computer models will be run at tighter resolution and uh, these sort of very local uh, uh, features will be picked up. Probably Thank you. Has been a We've had a, a number of incidents overnight uh, that we're now looking at uh, declaring, uh, rather than local government areas, uh, a significant region of Queensland as a disaster zone. So we'll advise you a little further this morning. We're just looking for an appropriate northern line and everything south of that will just be declared because we expect to see, as I said, over the next few days, not only Toowoomba but Warwick, Stanthorpe, Condamine uh, and other areas back into the disaster uh, range. Uh, I should say that uh, we do expect to see both in terms of things getting worse, and you might have been thinking about what we said yesterday, Cathy. What we're expecting is that uh, Ipswich, over the next 24 hours, is likely to start to see the, the waters peaking, and in the Brisbane uh, area Wednesday, Thursday, uh, will be the time when we see the waters hit their high mark for this week. So over the next uh, two to three days, Ipswich and Brisbane will be our high watch areas here in the southeast. But equally, we've got a number of places in the southwest where we anticipate evacuations and continued problems in some small and quite large communities. And that mega zone, the I'm double checking that for you, but I, I suspect yes. At 16 to 18 metres in Ipswich, do you have any modelling of how many? Uh, no, the Ipswich City Council is doing that work at the moment. Uh, clearly there are many more parts of Ipswich that have been settled since 1974 or since we've seen rivers uh, at that height. Uh, the current hydrology indicates that we, we will expect to see 16 metres. The uh, rise from 16 to 18 will depend very much on the rainfall. And as you've just heard from Jim, there's you know, that's not entirely clear because the catchment that's feeding this is not just here in Brisbane, it's way up into the Lockyer Valley. So what's happened to the flash flooding in the Lockyer uh, River is now turning into a significant river flood as it gathers uh, strength and coming down that system. And are you looking at problems with getting supplies into that Lockyer Valley, Lockyer Valley region at this stage? Like people in Grantham, they uh, we've got challenges getting into a number of these communities, uh, getting our emergency personnel in and getting supplies in. And yes, they will be issues uh, that we have got. This is our number one priority this morning and we have an entire strategic team in the major incident room with the Queensland Police working on these issues. Uh, we also anticipate that we may see supply issues into uh, parts of uh, central and northern Queensland uh, given that we have now seen cuts to the inland highway that was taking supplies as an alternative to the Bruce Highway. So uh, we've got quite a lot of work ahead of us ensuring basic supplies uh, logistically into a number of those communities. There is a fair amount of panic, I think, for Brisbane now. How many homes do we know? How many homes could stand to be affected when it comes tomorrow? The Brisbane Local Disaster Management Group are meeting at 10am this morning. The purpose of that meeting is to uh, look at the new data and advise people accordingly. So uh, in the interests of accuracy, I think it's important that we wait until the, uh, the Lord Mayor and the Local Disaster Management Group here in Brisbane meets for the first time this morning. Uh, I do think that uh, it's important to understand that 
Without Wyvernhoe, we would have this um, a very significant flood in Brisbane right now. Uh, that dam is keeping that uh, 1,200 megalitres, a million litres uh, a day af off um, uh, and out of our streets. But uh, the circumstances with this continued rainfall are putting pressure on all parts of that system. So uh, there's no need to panic in Brisbane, but there is a need to get good, accurate information and listen to the bulletins. This is a changing situation, but one that is being managed. Are you happy with how emergency services handled the situation? We had uh, sort of emergency services in the chopper that we had um, for a long time looking for those people on top of roofs mm. before they could actually get there themselves. Mm. We will have a total review of all of the uh, disaster response over the last for this entire event. Given what's happened in the Toowoomba and Lockyer Valley, uh, that review will have a particular focus on that event. Uh, but I have to say the extreme nature of this event, the rapid escalation of it in a very short period of time, did require every effort to be made, and I recognise that in some cases news helicopters were also being used. Uh, that is, uh, I think, an appropriate response. And... I thank uh, those news, news helicopters who made them available. This was an all-hands-on-deck, uh, no-questions-asked, get-in-and-do-whatever-you-can event, and that's what we saw. There are people alive today because of that attitude that prevailed yesterday evening, and I thank everybody who was part of it and assisted in any way in any of those rescues. Uh, as I said, and you saw it last night, it happened so quickly. Uh, it was every, every uh, hand to the wheel, and... Um, I'm very pleased that we managed to get so many people, 43 rooftop rescues, many of them at night time, done overnight. Uh, it's, uh, it's very heartening to see that sort of response. And as I said, many, many acts of courage and bravery behind every one of those rescues. Uh, I'm here today uh, working with the Disaster Management Coordinating Group. Uh, it had been my intention to try and get into these areas. That's not possible. This is still an operational zone uh, and it's uh, not appropriate and uh, not possible at this stage to get in. Uh, we expect to see potentially, uh, it, well, we know that there are between four and five areas uh, where the road is cut from Ipswich to Toowoomba. It's not clear that they'll be cleared for some time. Uh, similarly, uh, air flight into the region is not possible. But even if it was, frankly, we are still in a desperate search and rescue phase. This is not the time for me to be visiting and talking uh, to locals. I'll do that as soon as it's appropriate. Just on Brisbane, we're still looking at three metre peak tomorrow afternoon. Has that changed? OK, the answer to that, the answer to that one is the, uh, the hydrologists are now working with uh, Brisbane City Council and uh, SEQ Water and we do expect the next warning out very shortly. So they're recalculating because the rainfall's changing all the time and the releases from Wyvernhoe. So th there's all those factors operating. Do you think you'll bring uh, Potentially. We'll let you know. Uh, it is a rapidly changing situation. The, the extent of the rainfall last night has uh, changed all of the models and we'll be updating people as soon as we can. Thank you. Thank you.